Hi, I'm Mike Bellevue, and today we're here at Duelist Den, and uh, I'm going to show you my Lamat revolver that has been defarbed. Now, this gun, the Lamat, uh, was invented by uh, Jean Alexandre Lema, and a lot of people think it should be pronounced Lema, but we're here in the United States, we don't say France, we say France, and generally people say Lamat, so that's what I'm gonna say. Now, this revolver is uh, kinda unique. It's often called the grape shot revolver because not only does it have a cylinder that fires pistol bullets, in this case 44 caliber, the originals were 40 and 42 caliber, but it also has a shotgun barrel that fires now well, about an 18 gauge shot load. So that made it kind of an interesting weapon. There were only about 1,500 of these produced for the Confederacy. And uh, I've had this one defarbed. And the term farb or farby is a reenactor's term. It really came out of the early Civil War reenactors in the 1960s. And when something is farby, it means it doesn't look like the historically correct originals looked. It, it has errors in it, it has modern things in it. Uh, so defarbing is bringing things into a correct historical look. And, and that's what I had done by Lodgewood Manufacturing on the Lamat. And uh, I'm going to show you what it looked like to start with, and then I'm going to tell you what they did, and then I guess we'll do a little bit of shooting with it. This is what my Lamat revolver looked like in factory fresh condition from Dixie Gun Works. Uh, and I've had this gun for quite a while and I've kept it in pretty pristine condition. So what David Stavlo did when he defarbed the gun is he removed all the Italian markings. So where it said 44 caliber for black powder only, that's gone. The roll engraved cylinder, gone. The Pieta, uh, and black powder proofs all gone and in their place he's got an appropriate serial number made out of the the Pieta serial number uh, and the Le Mans stamp uh, the Lamat stamp I mean um, he also reconfigured the nose of the hammer it's got the rounded configuration that the originals had which gives it a different profile and then everything was polished and uh, all the metal was antiqued and the grips were worn and refinished so it's got the look of the original now a lot of people would say well all you're doing is making a fake uh, but it's not like I could take this down to the Baltimore antique arms show and sell it for twenty thousand dollars because underneath the grips the original Pieta serial number is placed there and See if I can find it for you here. All right, on the front of the cylinder, you probably can't see it in, in this light, but the black powder proof marks, uh, the Italian proof marks, are still on the cylinder face. So, if, if you did try to pass this off as a fake, any knowledgeable collector would be able to debunk it almost immediately. But, it's got that beautiful look of an original now. It does not look uh, like the Farby Italian job, so let's see how it performs. Well, I understand that a lot of you who are watching my Lamat videos got interested in Lamats because of the HBO television series Westworld, where Ed Harris's character carries a very cool cartridge conversion Lamat. And though I, I hate to break anybody's bubble if you're not aware of it, that gun that he's firing never existed in real life. Uh, there were real cartridge conversion Lamats. They look nothing like that. In fact, they are incredibly ugly guns. Uh, the, the one that Ed Harris uses, that's, that's a prop, uh, prop house creation, it's a fantasy gun, and in fact it probably couldn't function with anything besides blanks because 
that brake top action uh, on a Lamat is just too weak to support the firing of actual bulleted ammunition. So it would be a very unsafe gun to fire in actual practice. But on a TV show, it's good fun. Now, if you've seen my other Lamat videos, you know that the loading lever, which is very delicate, broke off. And that happened quite often on actual Lamats. And uh, the, the Lodgewood manufacturing folks put this plug screw in, just like the kind found often on original Confederate guns. All right, to load a Lamat, since, since we don't have a loading lever, what I'm gonna do is pull this pin, and that allows me to remove the barrel assembly. It just unscrews. So I'll take that off, pull a cylinder out, and I'm going to use an external loading device called a Tower of Power. Now, these, uh, these Lamats don't have the powder capacity of a Colt New Model Army or a Remington New Model Army or a Colt 1860 Army. And I'm going to be using Go X3F powder, so I'm only loading 20 grains. Because if you want to use a wad, that is just about all you can get in. So I'm going to drop 20 grains in there. I'm going to take a pre-lubricated felt wad, put that on top, take the pen and just push it in a bit. I'm going to take a 454 ball, and I'm going to put it under the tower of power. And there we go, load her up. So as you can see, I've cut a ring of lead off. So we're going to do that seven more times, and I'll be putting the hammer down on an empty chamber. Uh, loading the shotgun barrel is a little bit of a different proposition. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the revolver cylinder and put the barrel back on, which just screws into place. Line it up. Push that pin back in, and we are in business. Now, you, uh, I'm going to lower this a little bit. Okay, so to load the shotgun up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a uh, I'm going to go about a 45 grain powder charge. There's no real science to this. And I'm going to use a material called tow, which is just flax fiber. Unspun linen, basically. All right, so I'm going to roll this up into a ball. Now, one of the problems with the Lamat, that's a little bit more than I need. One of the problems with the Lamat is that it should have a 20 gauge shotgun barrel, but it doesn't. The 20 gauge would be 0.615 inches in diameter. And this gun is actually 0.60 inches in diameter. So it's a little bit smaller than 20 gauge. So if I tried to use 20 gauge wads and cards, which I have done in the past, everything would just fall out. So I'm gonna just roll this toe into a couple little balls, just like I would with a muzzle loader. I'm gonna pour a 45 grain charge. You can do more or less depending on what you wanna do. I'm just gonna pour that right in the barrel, just like, a, just like I was loading a muzzle loader. Now I'm going to take this ball of tow and I'm going to just push that right in. Okay. And I'm going to take this little ramrod and I'm going to ram it down. Okay, now I've got nine number two buckshots. And anywhere between nine and 12 is the uh, standard load 
for something like this. Whoops, I dropped one. But I'm just going to drop those nine pellets right down that barrel. And then I'm going to take this other ball of tow, put it over the top, take my ramrod, send it right down. Okay, now all I need to do is cap this thing, and uh, we've got a fully loaded Lamette grape shot revolver. Well, let's see if we can take out one water bottle with a revolver and one with the shotgun. I'm not going to lie, that was fun. As you can see, when you fire the shotgun, you use a separate hammer nose that flips down and hits that cap right there. And then flips back up out of the way and you can hit the next pistol round. We got them. Not very impressive though. We've seen these Lamats are, are actually pretty accurate in terms of the revolver, but kind of underpowered. Uh, and they're really a close range proposition with the shotgun because there's so little effective barrel. But at close range, they can, they can do the trick. So we're over here at Swing City and uh, we've got, you know, Swing and Sam and the Circle Gang. So Let's see if we can make steel ring. Getting a little bit sticky with the fouling, but as you can see, accuracy is, is really quite good. So we got Swing and Sam over there. I've been saving the buckshot for him. I'm going to cap it. And let's see what we do on steel with the buckshot.
Well, it looks like I got about six pellets on the target, which is about half of them. Uh, well, more than half. But even though I wouldn't want to be shot with it, <laughs> this is not the gun I would have wanted to carry. Well, let's finish off with the bad guy's view. 